Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to set up the Roku Ultra. So what we're going to do out of the box is take our Roku Ultra, and what we want to do is plug it into power as well as to an HDMI port on the back of our TV. So we're going to take one end of our plug and plug it in to the back of the Roku Ultra. The other end is going to plug into our wall. And then we're going to take the HDMI cord and untie this a bit. And then we're going to take these little caps off of the ends of the HDMI cord here. And then we're going to put one end in the back of our Roku Ultra. And then the other end going into the back of our TV. So here on the back of my TV, I need to find an open HDMI port. And for this example, I'm going to hook into HDMI 3. So taking one end of our HDMI cord, of course, the other end hooked in to our Roku. And I'm going to need to set my TV on HDMI 3 in this instance to get to the page that my Roku is going to be set up on. So now on your TV, you need to select the input that your Roku player is plugged into. For me, it's HDMI 3, and I have these convenient little tiles here that I can select my HDMI input with, which is this one right here. But on your TV, you're probably going to need to bring out your TV remote and find a button on it that says something like input or source, or maybe you even have a button that says HDMI on it. But what you need to do is switch your input to the HDMI that you're plugged into. So for me, I'm hooking in to HDMI 3 because that is where I plugged my Roku Ultra into. Now it wants me to pair the remote that came with the Roku Ultra. This particular remote doesn't have a pairing button on the back, so to put it into pairing mode, we're going to hold the back and the home buttons simultaneously for about five seconds. Once we do this correctly, we'll get a little light blinking towards the top of our remote, and it'll go into pairing mode at that point in time. So holding those buttons down, and now our remote should pair automatically. Once we get a green check mark, we should be good to go. We can now use our remote to select the language that we want to set up our Roku Ultra in. So I'm going to do English and click OK on that. It's also important to note that this Roku remote has rechargeable batteries. So if you ever get low on batteries, you have a USB type C port down here and it actually comes with a USB cord that you can plug one side into the bottom of this remote and then the other end has USB type A that you could plug into a computer for instance to recharge this remote. So now the next step in this process is we're going to connect to the internet. Now the Roku Ultra has an ethernet port on the back of it so if you want to do a wired connection directly to your router over an ethernet cable you can do that. For me I'm going to be doing wireless so I'm going to set up over Wi-Fi so I'm going to click OK on that and then set up a wireless connection. Then you're going to need to select your Wi-Fi router and then type in your password to connect up to your internet. And as long as you enter in your password correctly and you're within signal range of your Wi-Fi router, you should get a couple of green check marks there. Now it has an update available, so the Roku player is going to get the latest software. Once the update is installed, then our Roku Ultra is going to restart automatically. So we want to update our software, so we're going to click OK. So my Roku device is now up to date with the latest software, so I'm going to click OK on Continue. So now at this point, we need to hook up our Roku Ultra with a Roku account. So if you don't already have a Roku account, then you're going to need to create one. Otherwise, you can sign in using a Roku account that you might already have. Either way, we're going to enter in the email address that we'd like to use, and then Roku is going to send us an email to get things hooked up. So I'm going to click OK on Enter Email Address. Enter in your email address here, and then click Continue. Now over on my computer, I'm logged in to my email account that I had just entered into Roku. So we can see that we got an email here from Roku to activate the device. So I'm gonna click on that. And then it says, activate your Roku, confirm your email address and begin using your new Roku, activate within 30 minutes. So I'm gonna click here where it says activate device. And if you don't already have a Roku account set up, you can do so now at this point. I'll also have a separate video linked down in the description if you need additional help on how to create a Roku account for the first time. So you can check that out. But once I log in to my Roku account, at this point, I can name my device. And then I need to select the location of where the device is located for me. It's in the living room, so selecting that. Then you can look over the Roku products terms of use. And if you agree, you can check this box. And then we're going to click continue. And if you'd like to, you can answer some additional questions to find personalized channels and offers for you. If you don't want to do this, you can just click skip. Then it takes us to the next page where we can add channels to our Roku home screen if we'd like to do that. So if any of these channels look good to you, you can click add. Otherwise, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and click continue. And then it's going to give you some free trial offers. If you'd like, you can take a look at these different free trials. But if these don't interest you, again, you can scroll to the bottom and then click on where it says continue. And setup is now complete. You can manage your account preferences, subscriptions, and more at my.roku.com. This is with the Roku account that you had just created. So if you'd like, you can go back to your account by clicking on this link right here. 
This takes us over to our account dashboard. This is where you can manage everything that's associated with your Roku account. You can also scroll down to see all of the linked Roku devices that are set up on your account, and you should be able to find your Roku Ultra in this area. So now I'm gonna take you back over to my TV to finish up this setup process. So now back over on our TV, we can continue where we had left off. This is going over voice consent. So essentially on the side of your Roku remote here, if the switch is up, then the remote is listening. You can say, hey Roku to do searches. Otherwise, if the switch is down, it's gonna be off and the remote will not be listening at that point in time. So checking this box that we understand and then we can click okay on continue. And it's important to note that you need to speak towards the remote, not the TV, because that's where the microphone is located. Make sure the remote is nearby, of course, and reduce background noise to get the best voice search experience that you can. So again, moving on by clicking continue. Now we're all done with our setup, clicking OK again. Some additional things I'd like to touch on before finishing off this video. If you would like to add additional streaming apps, what you can do is go down to search. And let's say I'd like to add PBS. So I can start typing that in here in the search. Then that shows up over here in our apps. So clicking OK on PBS, then clicking OK on Add App. And then it's gonna download and install the PBS app onto our Roku Ultra. And to find this, we can go back to our home page, and then it should show up at the end of the line. And we can see the PBS app shows up right there. Sometimes people also wanna get rid of this recommended area up here to kind of declutter the home page. So to do this, we can go down to Settings. And then scroll down until you find where it says home screen. And then in recommendation rows, we can click hide on that. Again, if you don't want those recommendations to show up. Also, I like to reduce the tile size so that more apps can show up on the screen. So I clicked OK on smaller. Going back to my home screen, showing you what this looks like, you can see I no longer have that recommended row at the top. I just prefer how that looks. And then I have more apps showing up because I made them a little bit smaller. It just depends on personal preference, what you want in those instances. And if you'd ever like to change your settings, of course, you can go down to the settings area. You can add remotes, you can change your internet connection. There's all sorts of things you can do in this area. But that's gonna wrap this one up. I hope this comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to set up the Roku Ultra was helpful. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I'll see you back here next time.